Almost none of this is real. Well, I'm real, but I filmed this vertically and the edges of the frame are made using AI. Today, I'm gonna show you how to manipulate your videos using this new AI feature and how I'm gonna be using this feature going forward with my clients. What's going on guys? Today we are talking lies and deceit. Basically covering Photoshop's new generative fill feature and a little bit of spice because this feature really does help you take vertical videos and make it horizontal and horizontal videos and make them vertical. And like nobody is talking about this. I've seen a couple posts here and there on Instagram, but this lets you film for both like social media platforms and long form content like simultaneously. So we're gonna dive into it. Essentially, you need three things, a camera, a tripod, and Photoshop beta. So in a nutshell, what I'm doing is filming myself vertically like you do for almost any content nowadays, but I'm making this content way more versatile by manipulating the edges using AI. Let's take, for example, this shot. In this shot, I am able to create a little bit more of a landscape, and I left a lot of negative space up top real or not, but I'm able to make some more convincing clouds, make a few more things that I like and that make the frame a bit more, you know, dynamic. This feature basically takes the edges of your frame in your environment and pretty much makes a Bob Ross painting for the rest of it. This is so realistic that I've sent it to friends and they didn't know what I was even referring to when I said the background was fake. This is a way to make those boring frames seem a little bit more interesting, but the goal is to make sure the lighting and the shading and the color of everything is consistent or you're going to break the illusion. Features like this just make filming so much easier because I'm a person, I suck at multi-platform filming. I refuse to film something for YouTube and then go back and film something else for Instagram. I would rather just crop in and figure it out and post, but now this gives me a little bit more confidence when trying to do both. This is not an always solution, but it does help to have it as a solution. Personally, I like to think of this tool as a compliment to what I already do, rather than it being just something, you know, some kind of gimmick that I use from scratch. Like you can use it as a living green screen because that's kind of what it is. And it's green screen for people who just don't have the full setup, who want to just go out, film something, replace the entirety of their environment, and boom, you have something very, very unique. But for me, I'm going to be using it a little bit different and I want it to be a little bit more subtle. So here are a couple of things and something that may be a limiting factor because this is a tripod thing. You cannot have movement. Movement is the like antithesis of this whole experiment. This is something where you're going to have your camera on a tripod. You're going to fake the environment around you and you can then use like zooms, dynamic zooms, transitions, whatever you want to, to get to the next clip. But you won't be able to do much with this because you're essentially stacking a photo on a video layer. So by getting the camera up and pointing down a little bit, you can get really, really creative because you're not confined by the horizon line and you can kind of make exactly what you want. Since I'm blending everything over the top of my initial video, I have to be very aware of like the border. I can't move my hands too far in and out of the video. It's going to create some weird clipping. I have to watch where my shadows are. So what works for this is kind of a wide angle, you know, and you're able to manipulate so much more punch in zoom. If you have a pocket 6K, you can film vertical 6K footage and then make something that's ridiculously high detailed. But you have to be very aware of the edges and Personally, I like to set my lenses to manual focus because to complement the illusion, I don't need my autofocus racking back and forth tracking me. I'm trying to sit in a still spot or I'm trying to have interview footage where the subject is just locked in and the background is not shimmering because that is going to break the illusion also. Okay, so this is kind of like a test thing for me. I'm here in this graffiti alley. It's a little bit of everything. There's running water, but I just want to see what it generates and what I have the ability to generate to purely test the versatility of this thing because this was, this was less than ideal situation, but I'd like to see what it can make. Things like this are incredibly useful for interviews because 
you have a subject who's long form content, who's just sitting, talking, you have your camera on a tripod, there's no movement, but let's say you mess up the framing and their head is a little too close to the ceiling or you're not perfectly on a third. This lets you reframe a little bit without losing or punching in too much. So really, really handy tool that I'm going to be using to kind of spice up a few interviews or add a few things that are just part of the environment that aren't necessarily there. All right. So when it comes to actually editing this footage, let's take this clip. For example, I filmed this clip vertically and I want to make it horizontal to put it in this YouTube footage. So the instructions are kind of long, but they're very, very simple steps. I take my nine by 16 footage I make a timeline. I do any trimming that I need to up front and I go ahead and convert my footage to rec 709. Give it a really nice color grade. That way I'm able to go ahead and screenshot this and export this clip to pull it into Photoshop beta. All I do is open up Photoshop beta, create me a 16 by nine canvas that is 3840 by 2160, same as my video resolution. And I take that screenshot that I have and just throw it on my canvas. I get everything centered, make sure it's filling the frame and I select the edges and generative fill does the rest. The great thing about generative fill is you get to select between different options and whatever you want to type in the search bar, it's going to find it. And it's going to find pretty convincing moments of it. Now, because we're using this for video and this is not a photo, I want this to be a little bit more convincing. So I'm not going to go over the top. I just want to go ahead and fill the edges of my frame. After I have a solid foundation to work with, this is where like the most important piece comes in because I'm going to just soft edge erase the me in the middle. What you're doing here is you're just punching a hole in the canvas. That way you can overlay this photo on top of the video footage. So I recommend getting a soft edge brush, erasing out the initial layer that I imported in, and you can be sure that you're erasing like through to the background. It's denoted by these little squares in Photoshop. It's really, really neat. It just shows that, hey, your canvas is now transparent and there's a hole in it. And now you want to export this photo with the hole in it. So we export it as a PNG. PNGs are exceptionally versatile and PNGs are going to allow me to export the rest of the frame has a hole punch in it. And I take that hole punch picture and I take it back into DaVinci Resolve and then drag the photo on top of that. And it should look like this. Now, I know I glossed over a lot of like the technical aspects of that, but I just wanted this video to be helpful for somebody who can just open Photoshop beta, take a screenshot of their video, pull it into Photoshop beta, generate the edges, punch a hole, export a PNG and drag it back to your timeline. The amount of things that you can do with this feature, it's like limitless because the more you start to understand your camera angle, the lighting and the things that you can do, you can make your footage a lot more immersive, but for simplicity, you can just go out, shoot, screenshot, and just keep going. So I'm using this right now to convert anything that's horizontal into vertical, which is super helpful for somebody who needs to post on multiple platforms. But what you can do is you can literally use it to your mind's extent and get really, really creative. I hope this made you aware of how like simple all of this really is. It is not too overwhelming for anybody, but if you do have questions and specifics, I've been using Photoshop for actually much, much, much longer than I've been doing video, probably like 15, 16 years at this point. So. This is where I started and it's really, really nice to go back and use the, the program that I've loved so much. So if you have any questions, I'll be in the comments answering every single one of them that I can or pointing you in the direction to where you can get your question answered. And yeah, so just let me know and I'll do my best to help you out as soon as possible. But with that all being said, that's all I have for you today, guys. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you loved it, consider subscribing because I'm bringing you more content just like this every week. So you guys stay safe, you're loved, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.